the insane asylum is here. <laughs> They're knocking on the door. Uh, I think they got a, a, a jacket for me. Yes. Uh, but 100%. life keeps going on. Life keeps changing. Uh, things are going crazy. Uh, I'm trying to clean my apartment. But, hey, you know, you can only do so much at the same time. But, yeah, it's not that messy. <laughs> That's your opening to the show that you've st- you cleaned your apartment a little. Right, it's not two bad. fucking minutes ago, two minutes <laughs> ago, you just went on a rant. He's hung out with like ten A list celebrities. Went to Florida, met spring training. You got a new T shirt out. Yeah, well, that's your shows popping, and you want to tell the people you cleaned up your fucking apartment a little? Well, I'm just going on what's going on in my life right now. Just everything is just so insane and crazy. I don't have... <laughs> King of content kind of wants everyone to know his his apartment is a little messy. Frank, I think it would take like three cameos for a cleaning lady. Why don't you just do that? Well, I need to clean before the cleaning lady comes. Oh, you're one of those. You clean before the cleaning lady comes. I get well, it. Well, it is like when your mom would say, you know, pick up your stuff before I can vacuum. Like, it is fair to yeah. say Frank has so much stuff. And God forbid if a cleaning lady put the wrong thing in the wrong place. Yeah, and I got to get these. I got to I gotta go through some of my cards. Murder. You put the Marino no. bobblehead next to the Pete Alonzo bobblehead. What are you doing? <laughs> you stupid bitch. Why would you put a Braves player in front of a Mets play? Get the fuck out of here. You don't get it. I don't get it. The incompetence, the incompetence of these cleaning. I feel like I'm talking to the wind. I told you to clean, and you knocked over all my bobbleheads. Frank, Frank, Frank. All right, let's talk about it, Frank. How was the week? It's a whirlwind. It's a whirlwind. Well, let's I mean, start off from when. Go ahead. I, 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 I believe we are now actually now uh, uh, traveling at Mach nine. Uh, we're 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 approaching Mach ten. Uh, the gravity forces are like rubbing my face, and I'm going. Blah, 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 but it's just crazy. We went uh, went from uh, yeah, Allen Houston walk to uh, spring training, back up north to watch uh, Seton Hall get uh, fucked, so they could so the, the whole nation gets to watch the the thrilling action that is Virginia basketball. If Virginia, if every team was Virginia. Nobody would watch basketball. Watching Virginia bat, watching Virginia basketball, should be a punishment. Virginia, uh, Tony Bennett, I left my offense in 1950. Two handed set shots, using up all the clock. And we'll pass the ball around. Still missed a shot by miles. We won't even score 40 points. I left my offense in 1950. Unwatchable basketball. I mean, how did they win a national championship in 2019? How? I, I still don't know how that happened. I mean, my God. You know, Virginia – someone had the perfect shirt yesterday. Virginia basketball is the basketball. Iowa is the football. Frank, how does yeah, that – Yeah, I saw that. that. Not only did Virginia play and expose the world to that torture, but it could have been this team right here, and instead we have Virginia. How does that happen? Yes, Virginia, there is basketball, and you don't play it. <laughs> but what happened to Seton Hall? And, and it was amazing, too. When we were on the trip, we went to Florida, which you'll talk about. The second Seton Hall lost in the Big East tournament, you turned to me and you said, they're going to get fucked. And I thought you were being dramatic. I was like, what are you talking about? They've already set themselves up. They're fine. They got and then it happened. Yeah, Joe Lenardi started saying, like, 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 the, like the, uh, Test balloon kind of situation. Yeah, basically, basically, uh, it, it's this: it's it's politics. People it's, are pissed off at the Big East. It's anti-Italian wow. discrimination, Frank. Uh, well, first off, I uh, if you look at the Big East, majority of schools in the Big East are Catholic schools. Mm-hmm. Secondly, the Big East had a revolt about ten years ago. There was the Big East football. There was the Big East basketball. 
And what happened was the Catholic schools uh, in the Big East basically said that, no, we're not playing this game anymore. We're not bringing in teams just so, just so we can uh, make our football conference tougher. Well, no, we're, all of us are – we're all going to pull out of the Big East. And basically when they pulled out, the Big East collapsed. And the old Big East became the American Athletic Conference. And meanwhile, uh, the Big East, the Catholic schools said, we are the true Big East. We want the Big East. And that's, that was the, the, the revolt, the new Big East came out of the ashes. They, they, they didn't want to get, they, did, they, they saw what was, co- what was coming, that like the, the death of the Pac-12. And these Catholic schools said, no, we don't play football. Why are we, uh, Villanova plays Division II football, F- FCS football, but we don't play football. Why are we kowtowing to football schools? We are a basketball powerhouse. And by the way, uh, UConn left, went to the, uh, the American Athletic Conference, their basketball program. They did win a national championship, but that was almost like leftover players. Then they, their program was dormant for a couple of years. They were, they, were, they, were, they were starting to struggle. Even the women's program was losing its power. And basically they said, okay, you know what? Fuck football. They've basically sacrificed their football program. Their football program's now basically an independent. And they went back into the Big East and then uh, hit again, won the national championship again, number one team in the nation this year. Uh, their powerhouses. I mean, look at the Big East. Villanova won two national championships. UConn won a national championship. In the last decade, three teams in the Big East have won national championships, one in the NCAA tournament. UConn is a big favorite, could win it again this year. And they only sent three teams. They sent six Mountain West teams. Now, the Mountain West might be a good conference, but I don't think they deserve six teams. So do you think this is more... And, of- and Virginia. Virginia, everyone loves Tony Bennett. But Tony, the, the Virginia sucked this year. The ACC sucked this year. I mean, we got we got Marquette's a three seed. Not, uh, no, well, yeah, no, Creighton's a three seed. Marquette's a two. UConn is the one overall. These are three top seeds. And Seton Hall beat two to three of these teams. It should have beaten Creighton. They missed, if, a call. they missed a call. So Seton Hall, the first team to finish five games over 500 in conference in Big East in the 45-year history of this, of, this, of this conference, which is a basketball powerhouse, blue blood, going back to Georgetown, Syracuse when it was in it. I mean, all these years, just, just great teams, UConn. How many national championships have UConn won? The Big East built and, and, and ESPN wanted to get more college games on for UConn. And they said that it would be cheaper if you had the whole package. So basically the Big East helped make ESPN what it is today. And look what we got here. Look what we got. So Frank, And the Big think- East got screwed because they basically eventually screwed ESPN, went to Fox. So Fox – carries their games. And you know what? I think there's a, an attitude. We don't want them. And so we get six Mountain West teams. We get Virginia. And and I I, I don't think Providence really deserved a shot. I, don't, I, think, I think they were probably just on the outside looking in. But St. John's winning six or last seven games. And Seton Hall certainly deserved to be in the tournament and certainly a lot more than that. Dud that Virginia played yesterday. Yeah, Frank. I mean, Virginia was terrible. They didn't score, what, for 20, 30 minutes? It was absolutely uh, 14 insane. minutes of gameplay. Uh, they, they didn't score the last 10 and a half minutes of the first half, and they, mm-hmm. they, they, they uh, didn't they, then three and a half minutes into the uh, second half. That was, so it's about 14 minutes of, of gameplay. Just gameplay. They, they were stuck on 14 points. It, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, Jake Malicic, uh tough day for him in the office today. Uh, he had all the he had the full jersey on. He had every every everything on. And tough look, tough tough. It, tough it, scene. They're awful. They're awful. They did. Did, yeah. did, 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 there were some shots they were taking wide open three pointers, where it was not only an air ball. It wasn't even in the same zip code as the basket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a bad game. It was very bad. Now Frank and, um, and Colorado. 
they kept turning the ball over because one thing Virginia does is play good defense, but basketball is a game of offense. You can play good defense, but 42 points? Sad. Pathetic. They had 14 at the half, and 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 Colorado State stopped playing defense in the second half. They're up 25 the whole second half. What's the point? They're just letting – Shoot the turn to the throw the ball around. If they score, they score. If they don't, they don't. <laughs> now, Frank, so, since they're out of the seat, uh, since Seton Hall is out of the dance, who who are you rooting for now? Well, Empire? I'm uh, part of the uh, bracket busters. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, of course, this video is coming out Friday, so uh, uh, the team I'm going for is uh, the, the winner of the Colorado versus Boise State play-in. Uh, could win some money. Bracket Busters, follow Bracket Busters. And it's sponsored by Dave & Busters. Uh, Dave & Busters, of course, celebrating the tournament. Happy hours across the nation. You, uh, uh, we're going uh, Thursday to watch at the Dave & Busters in Times Square. I think you're going to be joining us at some point, uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday? No, I'm not coming Thursday, Frank. I'm coming Friday afternoon for 10 Cooks. I'm going to be recording that. Oh, okay. We'll to talk about this after the show. I don't know why yeah. I didn't know that. No but, big deal. Uh, no big deal. Maybe you can edit this little part out. He's <laughs> clearly agitated. I'm a little confused, but dude, good. Yeah. I uh we started I no no, I don't I honestly thought you were coming uh, tomorrow, so yeah, I'm coming Friday. No big deal, but anyway, I'm gonna be doing me and Jenks are gonna be at Dave and Buster's tomorrow. Uh happy hours across the nation. Uh, celebrating the tournament. What is it? Five dollar would five dollar happy hour five, all day. All day at participating Dave and Busters. So watch the tournament and go to Dave and Busters. And we're doing a nice little walk down to Dave and Busters too. Make sure you guys uh check it out. Check out the video of the aftermath of the walk as well. Now Frank and Dave and Busters uh, Dave and but Dave and Busters I is like a, a, a absolute fun place to to, to watch. You have like uh, video games and uh, it, it's like a. What's it's your like favorite a, game, Frank? My old time, you know. I like the uh, you know video games. I like I like these sports games. I like uh, NBA the Jam. Blitz. Oh, NBA Jam was great, Frank. My brother yeah, had an NBA Jam arcade in his apartment at one point in his life. Oh, we had one. We in played the, all the time. We had one in the office. It might be downstairs somewhere, but we had one in the office. Do they just take everything fun in this office and burn it? Oh uh, yeah, they put that NFL Blitz in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, anything that's fun is uh, non bueno. Oh, how um, will you non bueno? Love that. Don't we have required HR training we have to do? Oh, yeah. You didn't finish 45 minutes of uh, just pure bliss. Now, it's is there any point in all of you completing that process? Because are you going to comply with the HR's protocols? Well, it's it's all common sense. Oh, which you have an abundance. Oh, duh. Sorry. Frank's never unreasonable. He always sticks to his common sense. Burning the ground, the world to the ground like the Joker on an hour by hour basis. Yeah, but this is Oh, like, it's all common sense. No this problem. is like harassment training and uh all that good stuff, you know, the fun stuff. What if there's a part that says about being disruptive to your coworkers around you when they're trying to quietly work? Uh they don't cover that. They don't, oh, they don't cover that? No. Have you done the course? <laughs> must, must have missed that. Yeah, no, this is harassment. Yeah, yeah, no. Hold on. Yes or no? Have you done no, this is harassment training. It could be a form of harassment if you're constantly screaming and someone's sitting directly next to you. But I'm fucking frustrated that my card reader's not working. <laughs> you're right. That's that what is we told HR. The bottom. If your fucking card reader isn't working, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Good call. Hi, Frank. How are you? This is HR. We would like to talk about <laughs> your first. <laughs> well, my fucking car's not working. Oh, okay. It's because it's Apple's now switching the, pro, the protocol. We actually had to buy an Apple uh, uh, camera. You have to use an Apple card reader for the Apple to read it. And uh, it's Apple's got the fucking monopoly. I sit in the gambling cave at the New York office because Frank was my orientation leader, and that means there was no orientation. So I just sit in the right. gambling cave in the morning to work. And it was, what, about 30 minutes ago, Frank? I started hearing screaming where you would think, 
you know, somebody was assaulting Frank. And I slowly made my way to the bullpen. And there he was trying to work his Apple card reader, which ended up working. No, no, no. Give me a new card. New, give me a new card. Uh, new uh, port. Sorry, a solution was found. But those 30 minutes, it sounded like you were being murdered. Because I wanted to get my e tanks cook video done before we started the podcast. And I ended up just fucking goddamn motherfucking technology once again. Fucking kicking my goddamn motherfucking ass. What's now, Frank is not Mr. Right. He is Mr. Right now. He needs something right now. <laughs> when he wants it, it's right away. That's what it is. He's Mr. Right now. Right, Frank? Or wrong? Yes, I'm, I'm too busy to deal with this shit. And then I got to do this goddamn Athena tra- training. That's the oh, HR yeah, training. That's... Yes, yeah. I finished it on the plane. But uh, it's it's pretty easy. It's just time, very time consuming, Frank. Very time yeah. Consuming. Well, that's, that's the point. I don't have the time yeah. for time consuming. Uh, and I'm the one that's going to get yelled at. So thanks a lot, HR. Don't you get paid? I think you get paid to take it too. Some something like that. I'm not sure. No. I'm pretty sure they pay you to take the course, right? And they add a little extra in your next next paycheck. I think a couple yeah, well. extra hours. All right, Frank. It's, uh, it's, going, right, it's going right to Joe Biden anyway. Oh, for sure, for sure. That makes sense. Um, let's recap. Did you, did you see the uh, Did you see the uh, the uh, the song that they uh, the song of the summer? What? The uh, politicians of America. Oh no, I haven't. Let's hear it. Got any of the money in your pocket? We're gonna take every less dime from you. Your big disgrace. Having some fun, we're gonna take it all away. Singing, we will, we will tax you. We will, we will tax you. Need a second home, need a private jet. We deserve it all more than you. We get the bucks, we get as you get fucked. Taxing your ass all over the place, singing, we will, we will tax you. We will, we will tax you. I love it, Frank. I love it. I think that's, uh, I like that song. It's very catchy. You got to take that and run with it. He's lost. He's lost. He's lost. Frank's been on his really his song it. game this last week. It's been insane. He he came up with the best the best thing they're that he said was like, uh, away, haha. They're coming to take me away. At least you you know. At least you know. I'm I hope they come. I want to be taken to a psychological institution just to be studied and taken care of. I don't think I've yes, slept for more I... than four consecutive hours <laughs> in about six and a half months, oh. and I am losing my fucking mind. You guys want to hear something? I support you. I support you guys wanting to go to a mental institution. If you guys want to, I support it. All right. Be good content. But I'll be. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to check in too, dude. I'm gonna have to get a camera in there. If they took away your phone and put us in a padded room, I would end up dead. Oh my god. <laughs> Frank would start throwing Frank me around. Without his phone. I I said this on I said this on the uh, the trip. I don't think Frank would survive in any other era. As much as he hates technology. I don't think he could live without it. It's his ultimate yin to his yang. Am I wrong or am I wrong? Oh. I don't know. Oh, okay. I just know, All right. Um, I, just know te- I just know technology is beating the fuck out of me. Frank, let's recap this uh, Florida trip. But before we get into that, let's uh, shout out our sponsors, Lucy. Shout out to Lucy. Delicious, delicious, delicious nicotine. All right, Frank, let's uh, recap Florida. Well, um, went down to Florida. Uh, I miss Florida weather. It's beautiful. Yeah. A little humid sometimes, but beautiful. I uh, walked up beach. You know, uh, um, I got to get, I, I, I found my old flip-flops. Hopefully they work. I haven't really ever worn them. Yes, I've never really had it. How, how would they not work? Well, I haven't really worn them, and I don't know if they, how they actually fit well. I just know that I didn't like getting sand in my shoe. That makes no sense, Frank, just so you know. Just so you're aware, that makes zero sense. I, I usually just let it slide, but that one, <laughs> flip No, I think it made sense, Mike. Right? You, 
Getting no, sand in, in a sandal is fine. Getting sand in your shoes is a pain in the ass. I think that's what he said. Yeah, so. This is where if we were in the hospital, the mental hospital, all three of us, this is where the doctor would say, no, you guys are wrong. Go and that's when we'd say, go oh, fuck yourself. Fuck you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see, and then you just. Yeah, yeah blow darts. <laughs> yeah. We can go down. We got a cold run. Go it, for his jugular. Go for his jugular. But but uh, this guy's built different. Hit him with two. But uh, yeah, uh, I have some sandals. Uh, maybe a little too tight. I got to buy some new shoes too. I got a lot of them. well. Uh, I'm going through my clothes. That's what I been. That's what I was doing yesterday. Found some stuff that actually fits you, that man. I didn't even fit any. They haven't fit in 25 years, so that's a good thing. Amazing. I also did a financial Amazing. audit of Frank's spending, and we've discovered that. Of all of Frank's uh, <laughs> buys, if in a pie chart, it's about five percent necessities, about ten percent nice to haves, and eighty-five percent nobody ever needs this ever. And the eighty-five percent is spent ninety-nine percent of the time between the hours of one a.m. and three a.m. And where that money is going is infomercials and diamond shoes the blackjack yes yeah dude yeah yeah if frank stopped shoes. spending money between 1 and 3 a.m and invested it this guy would be fucking jeff bezos in yeah 10 years. well i lost too much to diamond shoes i think i'm i think i'm trying to stop i think I'm, I'm i'm i think i'm on the verge of stopping i think i'm trying to stop he doesn't sound like an addict at all that sounds like totally healthy behavior i think i'm trying to stop you, you know you know you know what's frustrating is when you, when you start winning you get to a point where you go, okay, this is good money to get cut off. When you start losing, it's like you get pissed off. You want to get back to where you were. And then, then you find yourself sinking. That's gambling it's 101. That's why gambling yeah. is, is dangerous. That's why you should only gamble for fun and not tank. too much and not go over your head. Uh, but if you are going to gamble, gamble, gambling is, is, is a very good thing. Yes. Have fun. Have fun when you gamble. Don't gamble over gamble your head. Gamble over your head. Yeah. Don't gamble at the hours of one to three on your phone in New Jersey to a lady named Diamond Shoes. Right or wrong? And also, Frank, what was with the foldable thing? Well, you can't fold the clothes yourself. So you had to pull out a big machine. Put it Infomercial. In. It, it, it's it's way more time consuming. That is Wasn't that video just frustrating to watch? Mikey, I'm watching him Dude. do it in person. After he was done using that piece of shit mechanism, then he would basically refold it with his hands. But what it does is Frank reincarnate to Billy Mays. Just oh wow, <laughs> that's who actually did the commercial. <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet, Frank. You're an infomercial guy. He's got the Showtime oven. He's got the laundry folder. He's Frank's got everything. I used to have this yeah, thing called wow. Rubble Skirt. That you put the you that you uh, if you have like like soup or something like that on the on the on the stove, you push a button and it rotates and stirs. Because because stirring yeah, is way too much work. Guy's and, got a can crusher. He could uh, just step on every can. I, I was and gonna say the day I knew we had a problem is when you had the can crusher. When you had the can crusher, yeah, that's but I don't when I wear my shoes problem. at home, so I don't want to put my shoes on. And then they get it, it crushes. You might fall over. These are champagne problems, Frank. You're talking you're talking to a bunch of peasants right now. I don't want to. I don't. I don't wear you shoes are. in my house, so I'm going to buy a can crusher. But the Robo store really didn't work. Uh, of course, you know I bought the ECA cracker too. Yep. He bought <laughs> a mechanism to crack his eggs, and it's not even that easy. Every day, I watch. I edit every Tank Cooks episode, and every time he uses an egg, I go, "Oh shit!" Oh, here shit. comes here the comes, egg cracker. Here comes the shells and the yolk. The shells and the yolk, and then I see Frank dipping his fingers in there, trying to get it out. Oh, the trick probably, is to use another egg. Probably shell. right after grabbing a big raw piece of chicken. If I know. Oh Frank. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what salmonella. Is this chicken? What are you talking salmonella about? eggs. Some salmonella eggs coming right out. Who wants All it? Right, let's see there. Let's grab some accent. He puts his raw chicken hand right over the accent thing. No, see, Jenksy, the accent and and, and the, the paprika paprika actually overpowers any paprika. Just wait, Frank. Just wait to uh, the beef Wellington. Some are saying you're scared. Uh, Many I are still saying think it's 316 because he's what? on a stone cold shit today. I said Jenks might think it's still 316 because he's on a stone cold shit. Well, today. Frank's been avoiding the beef Wellington like Ben Simmons avoids a jump shot. All he does is that's talk why about I'm, it. He does. He's never done it. I'm, I'm coming on well, Friday uh, and we're doing the beef Wellington, we're, Frank. We're, we're doing the beef Wellington Friday. And now Scooby Doo says he's coming in the middle of the fucking day. So I guess I'm getting there early. 
No, I'm gonna. Bro. I'm getting there at four, and we're gonna go straight to to Frank's house. I'll check into the the hotel later, and then we'll do Tank Cooks. It's the dinner. Beef Wellington is a dinner. This is this his first time. What time did you plan on starting cooking? It takes like five hours to go beef Wellington. Yeah, Mikey, what planet Frank, do you live on? We're fine. You think um, we start cooking a beef Wellington at like five or six o'clock? You maniac. I know. So. I mean, so Jake's gonna start, start the. Yeah, this is my first time too. They're clearly, fucking rookie. Yeah, I'll, 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 stone cold today. Stone cold. Let's go back to NYC HQ Friday morning, and then uh, straight to Bellevue HQ, and then uh, you know Bellevue, Bellevue, Bellevue. Where is you know what, Frank? Why don't you buy a gun and shoot me in the fucking head? Because we're headed that direction. Why don't you just go ahead and buy one quickly? Bellevue is where really I got out of Bellevue is where we're going in the future. Ah, Bellevue is where I die, and it's where you live. It's, no, uh, Bellevue is the insane asylum. Whatever, man. They're both insane asylums. Losing my fucking mind wherever I am with you. I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened. I'm slightly mad. When we're I on our walk cold. today, I if I see wait, wait, wait. Dog, it, it, I'm finding a bridge. I, I cracked the code. Frank, the reason you're not in an institution is because the other people that are in the institution would lose their minds even more. <laughs> Everybody would have to get a lobotomy. <laughs> Every single person. <laughs> That's actually a really good call. Looney Tune. Looney Tune. <laughs> or he'd cure everyone. Everyone, everyone would yeah, be like, know. what's with that crazy guy? And they'd all become normal. <laughs> Yeah, they start like a little uh, a little meeting. Yeah, that guy. Is we nuts. just watch oh, me yeah. and Frank walking around, literally just talking to ourselves. Look at those two. Weirdos. All right, walk three hundred and sixty four. <laughs> <no camera. laughs> oh my god, dude! That's so, so you're doing devil's funny. grades today? Oh uh, no, we're going to say after the end of the season. So then, what? Are, what's your Mets recap from spring training? Eh, pitching looked okay. Look at that! Nice. Positive. Shout out the uh, the Joliet uh, prison birds, jailbirds. Uh, Shout out. The oh no, Joliet no, that guy sucks. Oh, okay. That guy I sucked. thought he was good. Seems like after I freak out and describe you literally executing me with a gunshot to the head, <laughs> you come into this really calm, peaceful place. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, huh? it's really disturbing. Like, look at you now. Now you're a big puddle of happiness. Like, what the fuck? The Mets hitting no good. Uh, could have been better. Uh, Harrison Bader. Uh, that guy fucking sucks. There we go. Yeah, now we're back. New York's finest. Uh, I heard you'd rather have a player named Root. Yeah, well, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's a better hitter than Harrison Bader. And she did. And she she's long gone. Rest in peace, Ruth. Great judge, some might say. Not me. Um, all right, let's go to... Oh, yeah, Frank, what was your favorite part of the trip, though? Uh, getting down to Florida. Spring training. You know, spring training is not like uh, other games uh, you, uh, where you uh, you don't have to win the game. You're kind of not intense. It's, it's, it's kind of laid back and relaxed. We stayed a so little your favorite far. part of the trip was the whole trip? Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love that, Frank. Mikey, what was your favorite yeah. part of the trip? Listening to that Jeff Perlman book, The Bad Guys Won, because Frank was in complete serenity. It was Silence. beautiful. Silence, Silence for hours. Yeah, I I know that like you didn't hear the background of limelight during the 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 audible, but it was playing in his ears at same the same effect. exact yep. time. I saw him yep. staring out the windows, looking at the birds, just smiling, looking over to laugh at me when I saw a fun, uh, heard a funny part. It was great. Not oh, a I mean, that guy. That guy's one is uh, by Jeff Perlman is the greatest book ever, uh, and uh, needs to be made a movie. And Will Pond's always prevented the movie from being made. Hopefully Steve Cohen comes to his senses and lets it be made. I mean, that team is so wild and so crazy. And, and uh, yeah, you, I think part of the thing, the destruction of the Mets was that the Will Pont and uh, Frank Cashin, who is this, this uptight ass squeaks when he fucking walks, uh, the probably half racist general manager. Damn. Um, was embarrassed by how the Mets won. And uh, he wanted to change everything up, and he started taking the heart and soul away. And the cocaine, 
Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that was part of it, but a small part of it. A small part of it. Uh, and uh, he wanted the whole atmosphere to change how the Mets carried themselves. And um, the Mets had this prospect named Greg Jeffries, who thought he was God's gift to baseball. And Frank Cash and uh, agreed. Uh, he was called the next Ted Williams, a pure hitter. His cards, his rookie cards came out and they were worth $20. Everyone wanted a great Jeffrey's rookie card in 1989. They said that uh, you, you could, in 1989, you could have a great Jeffrey's card. And then some guy would give you, uh, someone to have a Griffey rookie card. He would trade, he would trade that Jeffrey's rookie card in a second for Griffey. That's how valuable Greg Jeffries was. He was the hot rookie in 89. Not not Griffey. Not Griffey. Now Griffey, of course, you know. But Greg Jeffries in, in 1989, everyone wanted the Greg Jeffries card. It was the most wanted card. Everyone wanted Greg Jeffries. You wanted to stockpile your Greg Jeffries cards. And he came up. He was good in 88. But the players hated him. Yes, he was a brat. He uh, had his own bats, and uh, he was upset that the team captain, Keith Hernandez, was looking at the bats and, like, snapped at Keith Hernandez, don't touch my bats. So much so that Roger McDowell pissed on his bats. <laughs> so, anyway, Jeffries was a – not a great – he wasn't a good fielder. He got kind of, he kind of got the yips with the Mets, and he never hit as well as he was expected to. And so the fans got down hard on him. Meanwhile, he's talking to the front office. The front office sees him as the future leader. So he starts talking with the front office and telling the front office what's going on in the clubhouse. And uh, it, that he was supposed to be the model of what the team was supposed to become. This, like, like God's gift baseball. He carries himself as a professional. And meanwhile... I can't believe it. That woman is not his wife. So he became like persona non grata in the clubhouse and that ended up being what destroyed the Mets was they wanted more Greg Jeffries type players and not players that had spirit and heart. Like they got rid of uh, Jeffries and uh, Dykstra didn't like each other, so they traded Dykstra and McDowell. Mikey, did this all spawn for me just asking you what your favorite part of the trip was? Yep. Love that, though. Just I love checking. Jeff Perlman. Great book. Yeah, um, yeah Frank. You're and Greg Jeffries is a whiny bitch. Yes, he is. He's a whiny little bitch. Uh, I think uh, that, comes directly from, that comes directly from Lenny Dykstra. That's how you know it's real. Uh, Lenny, Lenny, Dykstra. Always, Lenny level-headed, as they used to call him. <laughs> Lenny level-headed. We love you, Lenny. Come for Frank Walks. Um, yeah, so yeah, that was my favorite part. And then also, yeah, the beach, the beach was the best. I, I went on the beach every morning and I saw uh, Jenks working out like a madman, kind of crazy. I was in the beach or in the ocean. And all of a sudden I see him. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Dude? Lunatic. But that's, that's Jenks. So Jenks, your favorite part? And, yep, well, and you know, we're going to a Jersey Shore at one point this year. Yes, we are, Frank. Yes, we are. What was your favorite part, Jenks? My favorite part of the trip, um, probably yelling at a TSA agent for groping me. Yeah, that was weird, dude. That's I didn't weird. enjoy it's, the grope, but I enjoyed standing up to him because you're not supposed to really yell at people in the airport. I got pretty upset. And then the best part was when I finally got my shit together and walked away. There's Frank, Lord Palpatine, with a big smile, nodding, just like he didn't really know what happened, but he could see I was pissed and stood up for myself. And he's like, mm -hmm. good job, young son sensei. Good job, young sensei. <laughs> Good, <laughs> good. And these TSA you guys, are guys really, are out of control. You guys are really uh, building the case for this matter. Public thing. service you announcement. Know, I'm just saying. If you get felt up going through security, report these motherfuckers. Because I'm convinced people are taking these jobs just so they can grab people's crotches. Because on the scanner, it clearly showed a rectangle on my butt cheek. I pulled out of my back pocket a hotel key card. It was clear as day what it was. 
This guy's cupping my balls like Joey's Taylor and friends. Like, oh, maybe something's on my left nut. It's like, <laughs> dude, what are we doing here? And then I took a step back. He goes, what are you doing? I was like, well, you're making me a little uncomfortable. And he go, it was the whole thing was out of control. The whole thing was out of control. That's nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was my favorite part of the trip. Looking up uh, job applications to TSA right now. No, just kidding. Uh, all right, Frank. Oh, look at the little puppy. Little puppy uh, walking by. Little puppy. Big puppy, actually. All right, Frank. Let's get some grades to the Devils. You're wearing the Devils hat. Let's talk about them. No, he doesn't want to do that today. He said it earlier in the episode. You should really listen. Oh, yeah, the grades are for the end of the season. Frank, all right. He Let's did originally say it, though, and it's in the script, so I'm just busting your balls, Mike. Yeah, 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 no big deal. Um, oh, yeah, before we get into the next I just mentioned the yesterday game. watching the game, watching some of the poor play, that we're going to be doing grades. Of course, as I'm not going to be going to many games the rest of the season. Thank you, God. Really, I will Frank. say this, though, Mikey. One thing that's going way under the radar is that the New York Knickerbockers, one of the original founding teams of the great National Basketball Association, is in a very special place right now. And we've waited a very long time for this. For real fans that have hung around through all of these past 20 years of suffering, we built a homegrown organization. We built a team around defense, team play, lack of ego, and for the first time since Walt Frazier, our leader is our point guard who can create shots, makes the right play, and as even ESPN is saying, when the Knicks have a lead at the end of the game, you're kind of fucked because Brunson knows how to close. So I want to repeat what I've been saying, and Frank knows it, and I put it on the internet. There's no denying it. From the start of the season, I've said the Knicks have a real shot here and people are sleeping on them. Mitchell Robinson is reportedly coming back. OG, they might shut down till the playoffs. Randall's coming back. The Celtics want no part of us. And I'm going to say it once more. The New York Knickerbockers can win a championship this year. I will say one thing. Yeah, I agree. The Celtics now are in a situation where if they don't win the NBA championship, they're just season a bust. I agree. And I think – they will face the Knicks in the playoffs and they're going to have so much pressure on them. And the Knicks are going to put so much physical pressure on them. It's going to be very hard. He said that the Bucks can possibly win, but their coach is an idiot. And they don't have a lot of depth. The Celtics have the depth. The yeah. Knicks have the depth. And if the Bucks have look one the, injury, they're in trouble. I look at the teams in the West. Uh, Denver can make another run, but I, I don't, I think, I think uh, OKC is too young and the Timberwolves always choke. There's a great – in American society and sports, I think there's always a pendulum that will swing back and forth. And I think in the NBA, because LeBron is a bitch and ruined the league by being a total coward and joining the two other best players in the league to win his first title and then act like he's the greatest player ever, he started this whole culture of if I don't win in my first couple of years, I need to go find someone else to win with. That whole generation, they're all in their mid-30s now, and they're still doing that bullshit teaming up, whether it's Paul George and Kawhi, LeBron and AD, KD and whatever three superstars he decides to play with, none of them are winning anymore. It's the Denver's, the Celtics, the Knicks, the teams that are exactly. have real cores and play team basketball. And I'm very optimistic that the league's going to start shifting back that way. Players are going to take pride in not teaming up. And then the other thing I read, Frank, I don't know if you saw, the refs are actually starting to call less fouls. They've seen that there is a crisis bit by bit, and then next year they're going to fully implement it. Did you see that? I mean, remember the last three years? Or he, says a, he says it's a flush. What do you mean I say it's a flush? The dictionary says it's a flush. If you don't touch the rim, it's not a dunk. It's a flush. It's not an insult. It's just it's like when Dwight Howard in the dunk contest threw the ball through the hoop. wasn't a dunk. That was a flush. Yeah. That's what, still that's what Ant did. Anthony Edwards. And you have to be more athletic because you have to be above the rim to throw it down. I, I think yeah. I think what it is is, is – I, I, I think it's semantics, but I think that the, the, that that like that maybe five percent of people know that there's that, something called a flush. Yeah, and it's, it's never even talked about. Point zero five percent of people know the shit you know. Yeah, that's why we got. Well, and it's also point zero five people actually. There, how many times have we seen a flush? You know, but uh, it, but what, uh, but was that, was, was it John years? Collins? John Collins. Dwight John Collins, the one who got posterized. Yeah, he got 
Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> just retire. And honestly, he he jumped it like like outside of the restricted area. Like he probably had thought there was no chance he was getting dunked on because Ant took off from fucking the three point line basically, and somehow. Uh, I I mean. I mean, when you get posterized like that. <laughs> Listen, That's I learned from the late 80s Pistons. I played uh, in Westchester. I played against a lot of big boys in basketball. Never got dunked on. The key is you always got to hit them before they take off. That's what they did really well with Jordan. So when Jordan would gather, you hit him right in the hip. You can't You can't get dunked on. You can't let that happen. Yeah, I mean, would fucking. I mean, no. <laughs> The, the, the only person, the only, the only person who really like emasculated Jordan. The only time I ever really saw him really get like emasculated, dunked on, posterized was John Starks. John Starks, three yeah. game two, Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> but, but even then, Frank, he was more passing. It was not a direct. Yeah, he was direct. Like but, sideways. But that didn't happen to Jordan. <laughs> I know. I'm saying no. <laughs> the, the, the one example you have, it still wasn't even a real posterization. <laughs> Horace Grant. That and the. Uh, the AI crossover was – that was just nasty. Was and then Jordan came tremendous. back the next game and scored 54 points. Yeah. And the yeah, Bulls, yeah, and the, Bulls yeah. the next four games, went back to the finals and three games. You don't always love it. He, he didn't take it very well. In the 80s, he always had – the 80s, he always had, like, the, the dunk posters. And it was always like that, like – Those were great. Like – like, uh, <coughs> like uh, I had them all over Like Jeff list. Rulin of the of the Wizards, of the Bullets, going – Yeah. Like some, yeah. some, some pathetic-looking white guy going – you guys remember John- <laughs> Mark Jackson looking up at Tom Chambers? Remember that one? Wasn't that Mark Jackson? I don't know about that one. The one when Tom Chambers puts the knee in the guy and then dunks on him? I think that was Mark Jackson. <laughs> but, but I just I just remember, I, I, it might have been Dominique Wilkins. I just remember Dominique Wilkins was doing this dunk and Jeff Rulin standing on the basket going. Well, do you remember his dunk on Bird? Talk about emasculating. So he, he like broke Larry Bird in half. Bird like crashed to the ground and was dead after he got dunked on. Yeah, that was bad. But Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Rulin. Shout Jeff, out plumbers. Shout out all the fucking young people here that don't know anything about basketball. Jeff Rulin actually looked like a plumber. <laughs> get, get the gun, Frank, and shoot me in the face. But that's Jeff Rulin. I mean, Jeff yeah, Rulin. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Get Jeff to shoot me in the face. Fine. Jeff Rulin sucked. Yeah, no, I hope he kills me. Jeff Rulin sucked. I'm telling you guys, you guys are making the case, dude. Just I, I think three, Jeff four days away. What would you say about Belleville? <laughs> Frank, you're a lunatic. Um, all right, let's talk about the Dolphins, Frank. Free agency has been uh, – What Dolphins? They lost all their players. They don't even have enough players to field a team. They're going to have to – everyone – I heard – this is what I heard, Frank. All the wide receivers are playing cornerback. They're going to have the QB and the running back be the inside linebackers. And they're going to punt on first down. Punt. That's why they paid a punter $18 million. I know. You guys are turning in. Yeah. Oh, and also, who'd you hear that from, Jenks? Frank? By the way, by the way, they signed that fucking 87-year-old idiot slob to the team who just guaranteed their first playoff win. Nikki Smokes level mush by what's his name? Shaq Barrett. Shaq, the senior citizen, as he's known, coming in to ruin everything. He's like 39 years old. Dude, this Shaq is the Barrett all year. is a Super Bowl champion. You guys need to respect that guy. He, when, yeah, but he won four he's years. He's 31, ago. Frank. He's 31. He's 31? You've been telling me he's 87. I thought he was older than that. God damn it, Frank. God damn it. Isn't he like a lineman? He's old. He could have like five more good years. No, he's yeah, a defensive he's a linebacker. He's a linebacker. Right. Linebacker's last Every time line this linebacker. happens, our trust takes a step back. But, and I have to go that's back. That's what you want to do. He's the heart and soul of the defense. How am I supposed to know what's real and what's not real when you're constantly feeding me bullshit? <laughs> I thought he was 38. Catch on like the Drew Gilbert thing, where he turned from five eight to five seven to five two. Well, you actually like, saw Drew Gilbert. the Irish. Now you saw Drew Gilbert in person. By the way, he's four five now. Sitting down, Frank, and he was Mikey, nice. You saw Drew years. Gilbert in person. Well, he was yeah. kind of short. It was hard to see him. Yeah. Oh, that was him. I thought that was a kid. Sorry, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Mikey, <laughs> Is that you what you want my response to be? He's actually in Tanks in the Wild. He's the one I'm talking to in Tanks in the Wild. 
Oh, I thought that was Hezbollah. That's actually Drew Gilbert who I was talking to in the video. I know. <laughs> Caption right after that you met. Yeah. But yeah, Frank, you're you're a lunatic. The the facts that you put out sometimes. <laughs> What? He's the most self-aware <laughs> lunatic I've ever what? met in my life. What are you drinking today? <laughs> oh man, we haven't even gone for our walk yet. We're going to Harlem and we're going to visit a fucking crypt. We're gonna go look. We're gonna go visit the dead. Hopefully, Frank leaves me there. No, Frank. It's Grant's tomb. Who? Grant's tomb. Grant. Grant. Oh, okay. You yeah. know who Grant is, right? Yeah, ex-president. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm poorly educated, but I know some things, fuckface. He's looking at you. Ulysses you know says, you know says, says Grant, who, by the way. Do you see the joy he had there thinking I might not know? By the way, you know yeah, by the way Ulysses, you. Says, Ulysses says, Grant, I mean, you want to talk about drunks? That guy, that, 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 he makes that you guy, look sober. That guy, that guy put, uh, had like an IV of like, uh, like, uh, like, it, like when he died, his liver was actually fermented. Shout out to my friends back home. Frank, 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 you're oh, a look, lunatic. Frank, you made a list of top 100s and a bunch of shit. We got to check out what's well, going on. Well, uh, we keep getting Twitter notifications. I, uh, uh, so what's going on? With, uh, you said you had this judge <laughs> thing going on? I got my robe yeah, and my hat. All right. Um, yeah. Wait, did you want to explain be... this new segment since the show's yeah. so well organized? Yeah. So since Frank is a lunatic and um, always <laughs> talks about what he would do if he was in charge, uh, I think we, we have a little segment called Judge Pink. Now, Judge Frank, Judge, here comes Judge, judge. Frank, here comes the Judge, here comes the Judge. <laughs> You're a lunatic. All right, so we're going to do that. And since we did Florida last week, I got three Florida mans for you. So the first one I'm going to start off was, or actually four because Rolling Loud was in Miami. Um, a bunch of hot dog vendors, they got robbed at Rolling Loud, which is a festival, a concert. Um they found a couple of them. What would the charge be for the, the people that were caught trying to steal hot dogs from the vendors? Um, they should uh, be forced to sit in a room and watch nothing but Virginia basketball for two weeks. <laughs> Frank, Frank, Harsh Frank. but fair. Um, let me find this other one. Okay, now we already talked about Seton Hall, but the guy, the guys who ruled Seton Hall out. If you were in charge and you got to give them a punishment, what would that punishment be? That they could only watch Virginia basketball for the rest <laughs> of their life. <laughs> That's it. They have to watch. All right, I like that. All right. Um. I really hope he gives you the same answer a third time. This segment is electric. Florida man taken into custody after climbing a cell tower and live streaming. What would you do if you were the judge? <laughs> What's his name? What's his name, Chris Clemmer? <laughs> <laughs> That is not a verdict. <laughs> uh, he has to count rice with uh, Chris Club. Okay. You're a fucking loony. Uh, Florida man riding human sized hamster wheel in Atlantic Ocean faces federal oh. charges. What was he riding? A human hamster wheel. A human sized hamster wheel in the Atlantic Ocean. We got to get you one of those for steps. Uh, I don't think he should be punished at all. I think he should be uh, celebrated. I, I think he should be celebrated. Let's let's uh, let's, let's see if he can circumnavigate the world. <laughs> That's a good all judge. Right. All good rulings. Florida man wears fuck the police shirt to court. Uh, wins the case, but what would you do if uh, you saw somebody wear a fuck the police or a fuck the judge shirt while you were giving them a verdict? I've seen it. Yeah. Frank, <laughs> Frankie would put the hammer down on you for sure. I've seen it. Um, um, you know what? 48 hours of Virginia basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was this one time where the guy uh, 
was making noise in the holding cell at the uh, courthouse. And he was supposed to get out. He was supposed to uh, come in and uh, get out. And uh, I, I guess he uh, was fighting with his lawyer or fighting with somebody and he making noise. And so the, uh, the sheriff was supposed to go talk to him. And he said that that would be a quiet, uh, quiet down there. The judge's got a case on there. And also he hears this, fuck the judge. So the judge brings him out and says, and the judge goes to him and goes, you know, I'm going to be a bigger man. I could come out here and say, fuck you. But I'm not going to do that. I hate I could hear that. I could hear your case right now and I could sentence you and that would be my way of saying fuck you. But I'm not gonna do that. But no, you've disrupted the court and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you back to your holy cell because I'm not gonna say fuck you. And we're just gonna hear your case at another time. So but I'm not gonna say fuck you. I'm better than that. I hate when people do that because you're not better than that. You're saying fuck you and you're not clever. I don't know who's clever. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, someone, <laughs> someone, someone recently did that in one of these blog wars and I didn't. It was like, I, I wouldn't say this. And then they say it. It's mm-hmm. it's just not clever. Well, you're, you're so, clever. But you're so clever. Come on. You 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 do like. Riddles. Well, you had to be there. You had to be there. Had to be there. You had to be there. All right. Uh, last one, Frank. Florida man suspected of using private plane to draw a giant radar penis. It looks like that. Uh, last year, a guy in uh, Oregon. 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 Flew uh, around, uh, got on a flight, flew around the uh, Pacific Northwest, and drew a devil's logo. So Did you he get in trouble? This type of activity? Yes. <laughs> free right. of charges. Okay. I get a free pass. All right, if I you wasn't harming anyone, point. I don't see what the issue is. Yeah, just a big cock in the sky. I mean, uh, this who, funny. who knows? Maybe you didn't know what he was doing. He was, uh, the, yeah, maybe someone totally. had. A, maybe he just some... did the route of a perfect penis by accident. Yeah, maybe someone just has a dirty mind. He was flying in circles. <laughs> yeah, maybe you might be right. Long circle and two small circles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Florida he's man charged with assault. A fight. With a dead, Florida man charged with assault with a deadly weapon after throwing alligators through Wendy's drive-through window. <laughs> well, goddamn it, Wendy's, get your shit together. Wendy's, was it Wendy's? Threw an alligator at them. They were just like, they were just doing their job. Yeah, well, I drove by the drive yesterday. I was uh, thought about going to Wendy's after the game because I had to do a fantasy baseball draft. Was there an alligator? No, but the uh, drive through lane at uh, 9.30 at night was like uh, uh, 20 cars. It's like they have no one that uh, knows what the fuck they're doing. Wendy's late at night is the worst. Yeah, and they're selling for fucking McDonald's. Well, uh, even worse. You see, that they're, you see they're charging. Wendy's is uh, starting to charge extra towards uh, people who order late at night. Yeah, well, Dave Thomas is, uh, is turning in his grave. And uh, you bad, know who? You, by the way, but you know who? You know we had to thank for this, don't you? Who? His bitch daughter Wendy. No, Joe Biden. And of oh, course, okay. tune into NBC News, and we'll find out why inflation's a good thing. Down, 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 down. down. <laughs> <laughs> inflation red? No, it's not. We'll find out why on this week's edition of Sixty Minutes. <laughs> you know, if you have too much money and too much freedom, it's a bad thing. Why we should love Mao Zedong. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi. Yes, she does deserve every dime she gets. And she might even deserve more on today's 60 Minutes. If anybody oh, ever sees All right, perfect time um, for... Bring the straight jackets. Take us both. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody out there <laughs> sees or hears this, he he loves this because he knows he's a man on the loose right now. Frank knows he's well, a man Frank on just, the loose. Just threw it over to Google, so I can't see anyone like you. But you know, he's just a madman doing his own thing. All right, Frank, we're going to do some acid tank. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> What do you consider the best ba- uh, college basketball players who were bust in the NBA? Oh, I answered that on Twitter. Who would you put? Christian Leitner? 
I put Juan Dixon and Miles Simon. Okay. What, what? I don't think they're even busts, but just a couple of like guys I loved watching in college that didn't pan out in the NBA. Miles Simon, few years was Dal Strawberry's uh, brother-in-law. Well, that doesn't make him an NBA star. No, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, Adam Morrison, big bust. Yeah, that's a, that's a. Bust. Oh yeah, that was bad. Big, 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 big bust. Yeah. Um, Sam Bowie, a little bit of a letdown when they could have gotten Jordan. He had a decent career, but that was a tough one. Um, he didn't play in college, but Frederick Weiss didn't really work out for the Knicks. <laughs> Also, Jordan Hill. Also, everybody else we drafted between 2000 and 2018. Uh, never Purvis Ellison. Mm-hmm. Here's another one. Purvis Ellison. Ellison, yeah. All right. Uh, Mets, ma- Mets fandom aside, what is your expectation for the Phillies? Uh, probably wild card again. And the best mascot in all of sports. Respect the fanatic. Um, have you ever thought about going to a Colorado Buffs game uh, this year? Yeah. Or our um, guy, Dion. Right now for Colorado uh, to make a nice little run in the NCAA tournament. What is Jack Hughes' player comparison as a soda? When he's fully healthy, uh, Great. when he's fully healthy, he's uh, definitely a Pepsi. Uh, I got two more questions. Uh should Virginia get a year ban for the tournament after their performance? Virginia, unless they unless they uh, are like a, t- a ranked team, should never go to the NCAA tournament again. Agree. All right, and last question. And unless they unless they start scoring, unless they start actually playing the de- uh, offense, Tony Bennett. It's nineteen. It's twenty twenty four. Uh, the set two handed set shot went out of style with the uh, uh buckled shoes. That's good. All right. Uh, Fred Williams asked, Which celebrity athlete slash public figure that has passed away in the last five years would you most have liked to ha- do a walk with? Celebrity slash athlete that I would have liked to walk with in the last five years? That's dead. That's passed. That's passed away. Could be Carl Withers. Could be Betty White. Betty White. John Madden. That would have been a good one. John Madden would have been a good one. Uh, last five years. Bill Russell. Bill Russell. Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver, definitely. That would probably be your top one, Tom Seaver. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's all we got for Ask the Tank. Um, anything else? No, no. Who, you're going to thank us? Who are you thanking? What? Well, thanks for tuning in to the audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah our, thanks, our, thanks Uber, to the our Uber to Belleville is almost here, so we should actually wrap it up. I got to yeah. get, get Frank All in right. his straight jacket, and I need to find a gun for him to shoot me with. Thanks for watching the Looney Tunes, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Frank, any last words? Nope, but... When the outside temperature rises and the meaning is so clear, 1,001 daffodils begin to dance in front of you, oh dear. Are they trying to tell you something? You're missing that one final screw. (laughs) You're simply not in the pink, my dear. To be honest, you haven't had a clue. I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened. It finally happened. Oh, it finally happened. I'm slightly mad. I'm one card short of a full day. I'm not quite the shilling. One wave short of a shipwreck. I'm not usually top billing. I'm coming down with a fever. I'm really out to see. This kettle is boiling over. I think I'm a banana tree. Oh dear, I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened. Happened. 
It finally yeah. happened. I'm slightly mad. Yes, thank you for for uh, tuning in because I am knitting with only one needle, unraveling facets through. But you just had an you, you have an Uber, good. Frank, and you sang a two minute song. Get out of here! All right, that's all, folks. <laughs> Looney Tunes. 